guys. My name is Raul. Diana. Parker. Alex. And we are Cosplay Fame. You can find us at Cosplay Fame on all social media at Cosplay Fame, C-O-S-P-L-A-Y-F-A-M-E. Diana, where can the viewers find you? You can find me at, at crazy, but that's okay. You can find me at the Gabriel underscore Parker. At Jester2539. All right, guys. So, really quick, I would like to give an in memoriam. A lot of uh, famous celebrities have passed away, guys, and we would like to give some condolences and some love to uh, famous celebrities. First, of course, being David Bowie, magical legend as far as an actor so and a musician. Stardust man. Yep, star man. So, it's a sad scene and go. And uh, you guys have a quick comment? Great, great role in Zoolander. <laughs> yeah. You know where I always remember him? I know people talk about Labyrinth and Zoolander. I always remember him in The Prestige. Oh, Playing my Nikolai Tesla. Yeah. No way. I, that was him? That yeah. was Nick. Yeah. Oh, my was, God. He is really He's a transformative man of figure. Many yes, faces. definitely. I had to watch that again. Um, yeah. So, after that, of course. We had Alan Rickman, the greatest villain of all time. Mm -hmm. Hans Gruber, for some. Yes. Uh, to me, he'll always be the voice of God. He is the voice of God in Dogma. He's underrated in that movie. Yeah. It's one of the better parts of that movie. <laughs> you also have him as Severus Snape. He has many other roles that can be talked about. Some people really love him in Love Actually, playing the questionable husband of Emma Thompson in Love Actually. I don't know if you remember that. He was really good in that movie. So take your word um, for it. <laughs> you know, hold up your wands, guys. Uh, Severus Snape has left us. Uh, next we have is Glenn Fry, one of the lead singers of one of my favorite bands of all time, The Eagles. Uh, there's not much you can say about that guy. He's really a great musician, really talented. That whole team is really talented. But he was a yeah. several part of that team and sad team go. And lastly, which actually just happened yesterday, Abe Vigoda has left us. Abe Vigoda, if you guys have ever watched. Godfather, or if you've ever heard uh, Batman Mask of the Phantasm, he was a great voice actor, he was a great mafia-esque actor. People always remember him from Godfather, but where I always remember him from is in Conan O'Brien, they always had this thing about if Ava goes alive, because Ava Goda looks superiorly old at all times. They even made a Snickers commercial joking around about that. Uh, so it's sad to see Ava yeah. Goda go. So, now that we passed that, now to the main topic at hand, the main topic that will be debated fiercely no. today. How, 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 ah, how does... There you go. Ah, we are the master debaters. You... <laughs> <laughs> Breakups was... might ensue. <laughs> you um, might see a live breakup, depending the, the on this The civil topic. wars will start. Speak. <laughs> Which will we will talk about <laughs> in this podcast? Because I already saw the first trailer to Civil War. Yep, something I got. So, awesome. since Diana harked on it, our main topic today is trailers. Mm. And what about trailers specifically? Love them or hate them? Do you love them or hate them? There's been a growing contingency out there of people who believe that trailers should not exist as much as they do. I remember being a kid in the 90s and waiting to see a trailer was a big thing. And it is still a big thing now. When trailers get launched, it's one of the biggest pieces of news usually breaks. It happened with Age of Ultron. It happened with Star mm -hmm. Wars. Deadpool Especially. trailer broke. Um, <clears throat> many Independence trailer. I mean, just naming a few of the more recent trailers that broke that made big splash of big news. So the concern is, is the trailer showing us too much? Are the trailers... Is there too much advertising going on in this in the sense of trailers and TV spots? Should something be done about trailers? Should trailers be refined? And we have pretty much two sides of this argument. So without further ado, I think we should start out with what's good about trailers. And the two contenders on that side are Alex and Park. What? What? Nothing. Well, uh, why don't we have Alex start first? All right. Um... What was the question? Sorry. <laughs> Why are trailers good? What's good about trailers? Um, trailers are good because they, I mean, they that they, they, they advertise what uh, what movies coming out, obviously, but um, I don't know. I mean, it, 
they're, they're good. They're fun to watch. You know, like when you're going to see a movie, like it takes some of the hype off of that movie, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> for me, I think the great thing about trailers is that too many times have I seen a great movie and I think about like, when did this come out in theater? Like, when was this, when did this movie come out? How come I haven't, I didn't see it in theater. I usually like, uh, an example, I saw this movie on Netflix way back when called Chef. Uh, yeah, so with with the movie. it was it's a great movie. It's got what's his ah, John what's his Favreau. Name? John Favreau. Yeah. I, what a weird. Uh, but the movie the movie was Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Is a really small camera. What the the movie in itself is awesome. The thing is, oh, I never heard about this movie. And some of these movies are really good. They don't get any publicity, so I do not go out of my way to watch them because I don't know that they exist because they don't have trailers. I mean. I think that was just a straight to Netflix movie though. No, I saw no, trailers it actually, for it. It came out in theaters, selected theaters. Uh, it actually, I think it came out in cans and stuff like that. So. It should have came out here in Miami. I mean, we're based here. Yeah, I was. <laughs> well, maybe that's why. I mean, I definitely remember seeing trailers for that and thinking, wow, what an interesting. No, but it movie. did get a lot of appeal. I mean, it was mainly found through Netflix, like many movies yeah. are. There's many cult movies that come out that way, that are through VHS. For the beauty of Blockbuster or through Netflix, that movies became more popular. Um, I'm gonna say right now, you guys' argument sucks. So I'm gonna take over from now on. I mean, I, I didn't even. Uh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get into my argument. Well, Let's here we go. Into it. So we're gonna get into it. All right. I believe trailers are a prehistoric use of advertising. I believe you really only need one or two trailers maximum per movie, and. Not even including T-Spot. T-Spot should literally be a cut-up of the first or second trailer. Maximum. Meh. So, my argument for that is because trailers tend to show us too much. You. Tend to give away a lot of the plot. You. And tend to de stupefy the plot or stupefy parts of, the, of the, the movie to make you the audience grab on. So, okay. I feel... For example, my one of my major arguments for this I know it. is Age of Ultron. Ah. I knew it. Age of Ultron. Sonic if you coming. do not have, for example, I'm gonna spoil some things, guys. So if you want to get away from this, right? We'll, trailers we'll, gonna be we'll a you, lot of spoilers. Yeah, spoiler. yeah. This is spoiler. Spoiler. This show spoiler thing is gonna come, to up, come right up a little right now. <laughs> We're gonna talk a lot about Age of Ultron right now. Age of Ultron, I feel, would have been considered a much better movie if you remove from the trailers. All the Hulk, Hulkbuster fight scenes. Yes. And if you removed that opening scene where they're all going to punch at that really perfect, almost comic book shot of all of them coming across the screen, I believe if you remove those two shots, literally 10, 15 seconds from the trailers, you would have had an overall better experience from the movie from all the audience standpoints, and it would have been an overall better movie and received a better movie and Joss Whedon wouldn't have fried his brain and said, I'm not going to do any more sci-fi or any type of Marvel movie again. Yeah. Mm. Valid point. Valid point. But the thing is, it would have still been the same movie, though. So. But you don't have no that expectation. Reaction, yeah, but no matter the reaction to the trailer or not, you're still going to get the same thing out of the movie. Okay, so the argument is not enough or the, no, the publicity and then... For you would be too much. There's too I much. I think there's too much. Specifically for mm -hmm. science fiction and blockbuster movies that are coming out lately. Generally, superhero movies, um, big sci-fi thrillers, sequels, stuff like that. Where you're getting too much publicity. I can, you can make great points on the other side. I'm going to let you make your great points right now. Okay. I'm going to let you finish. Uh, thanks, Kanye. <laughs> um, I think another point why trailers are in fact good... Um, it kind of gives you a feel for the movie and kind of helps you decide whether or not you want to go and watch this movie. Because I think, I don't think I've ever gone, I've ever gone to a movie blindly without knowing whether or not, like, I want to watch this movie or I don't. Like, that, that decision gets decided, everyone's okay. been to a so movie. So you're telling Wait, me I wanna you need to that. see the trailer for Snakes on a Plane. To decide if you want to see a movie about there's exactly no, and let me counter. See, my I mean, my beef isn't so much that there's too much 
uh, ads as much as the ads can be very misleading. I remember with Funny People, Adam Sandler, Seth Rogen came out in 2009. That trailer was freaking hilarious. Was. Why? Because they showed the only funny parts in the whole freaking movie in the trailer. So I'm like, ah, oh, this is going to be great. Adam Sandler, Seth Rogen. It's based on a comedian. The movie is fucking depressing. It's about cancer. It sucked. And I was like, oh my gosh. I thought was... there's anything wrong with adultery. I mean, the I'm sorry? <laughs> I mean, we, we, South Florida, we, we don't judge, but you know what I mean? And that, and that happens in a lot of movies, like where you're like, oh, well, you don't go in blindly, but in a way you go in deceived. I expected a comedy, not wanting to like check my watch and be like, yo, Adam, wrap this thing up. Okay. And that happens with a lot of movies nowadays. You get the best parts of the movies or the funniest parts or the most action-y badass parts. And then when you're actually watching the movie, you're like, oh, this is the part where the trailer happens. So like you already know what happens. You say too much still? Stop, you sound like the same like, thing. Like you said, I agree with what you said. <laughs> it's still the same movie regardless. But it's kind of like, yeah. you know... It's like doing it for the first time. After the third time, you kind of already know what's going to happen. It's still good, but you already know what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I, I see your point. But the thing is... I'm sorry, hold on. Um, the thing is... Yeah, I see that you get deceived, but... I, I, I forgot what I was going to say. Just cut that part off. Okay, <laughs> so... <laughs> I think if we can bring it down on a philosophical level, not to do this so early in the mm. podcast, there is, there's a story, there's this old um, adage for comedians that part of comedy, a part of being laughter and comedy is about the surprise, yes. is that the punchline is surprise. Mm -hmm. So the same thing goes, I feel like, with trailers and movies. If you eliminate some of the surprises of a movie, you make it not as good as a movie when, it, when you actually see it in theater. You eliminate that part of the experience. Um, if I can take your guys' side for a second. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Alex. Um, but I, I see where, where, you're, where you guys are going at, but what do you want them to do? Show them the most, bar, most boring parts of the movie? Or? No, but not show all <laughs> the good parts. You know, like, let's how just, good? Let's how? Just show like, the dialogue, and then like when you go to the movie... Yeah. That that makes sense. Sense. Yeah. Out okay. Of so <laughs> I think like so the issue again with the the reverse of that I think it's on extremes. Either extreme is bad. Yes. Because you need to show something to get people interested. Yeah. But if you if you show obviously too much, but if you don't show enough, no one's gonna come out to see the movie. Mm -hmm. Like if if not if proper publicity is not given, if there's not a good like you know marketing you know mm -hmm. campaign or whatever. Chances of people to go see that movie, which is where most of the money comes from, for that movie, again, um, I'm going to bet, I don't know what the statistics are, but I'm sure a lot of people Look saw... the statistics. Yeah. Saw Chef I on Netflix want, as, opposed to, as opposed to in theater. No I want to see some research has well, been done. Let so me, if you want to provide us me, with some, that'd be awesome. Let me give you an example, that a very current example. Uh, the Maze Runner series. The very first time I was watching another movie and I saw the trailer for Maze Runner, I probably saw that trailer, I kid you not, maybe about 15 times before the movie actually came out because it would show up on TV or, you know, while you're watching movies. Every single time by the end of that trailer, and they would switch it up every now and then, I still had no idea what the hell the movie was about. I had no idea. I'm like, okay, there's kids, there's running, and there's mazes. And it looks really interesting, and I had zero idea what the hell the movie Sweetie, was about. Sweetie, what's the name of this movie? <laughs> the, the Running Man! <laughs> the Running of the Mazes. The, the Mazes. The me, the puzzle runner, the puzzle runner, the puzzle chaser. So <laughs> the puzzle chaser. So, but and then I saw that movie. Hey, young man, two for the puzzle chaser. <laughs> <laughs> well, puzzle chaser gets all the awards for me because. I went in, no intrigued I'm by their trailer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So, so puzzle makers one and two were. <laughs> <laughs> and they did the same thing with the second one. They gave you enough yes. to be interested, yet you had no idea what the hell was going on. So you watched the movie to figure out what the hell is going okay. on. But that also depends on the length of the movie. Okay, so you look at uh, Star Wars. 
the approximately, now I looked this up, the trailer, all the trailers combined showed about 4% of the actual movie. Statistics. <laughs> I, science! This, this, science. science the hell out of you. But, I mean, but look at the length. Like, a shorter movie is going to have, the trailer is going to take up a lot more of the movie. As opposed to Star Wars, I don't know what the length of that was, maybe two, two hours and a half. Hours. But I don't think it hours. had anything to do with the length of Star Wars but, as much as they were smart at marketing, yeah. which is point for but us because it proved it. Again, like, but longer movies will be have an easier time. They have more to pick from for the trailer because the movie in itself is, in fact, longer. I wonder. So. I wish I would have known that that is your argument. I want to look up the trailer to Titanic, which is like a 12-hour movie, and I bet you the trailer still didn't give you the whole entire movie. Not exactly hey, the best movie to argument. argument. Four hours. Spoiler! Yeah. The ship sinks! Oh, we know, we know this. <laughs> a lot of people die. <laughs> <laughs> but if I can make a pro argument. I'm gonna jump okay. sideways. Yeah, go quick. for it. I can <laughs> all right. take all you. All right, want. Benedict Arnold. <laughs> hey, 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 calm down. Maybe come back. Yeah. Hey, come, <laughs> come on, ex Benedict. <laughs> I don't like ex Benedict as much as other people. Ex Benedict. What? Ex Benedict. And ex Benedict. Ex Benedict suck a dick. <laughs> all right, let's um, hear. So my <laughs> pro argument was a well-made trailer and a well-made advertisement campaign was definitely, of last year, was Star Wars. Not only did you target the audience, not only did you show enough, but not everything, and definitely left a lot out. Big spoilers in the movie, big events that happened in the movie, yes, some of the better chases true. and battles in that movie. There's a lot of connections, people There's, knowing yeah. each other. I want to jump, uh, jump sides now Okay. and say... Superman vs. Batman oh. threw out a spoiler right in the middle. Uh, uh, don't, don't even get me started on Superman. Get me started. <laughs> Girl, Batman who snaps for you? Batman. They could have left Doomsday and Wonder Woman out of there and thought, hey, let's focus on this. On this and Actually, then all of a sudden... It's, it's called Batman vs. Superman. Yeah. We don't need all that extra pizzazz. That no. is, and it scares me because... That was a that was a movie. I, everyone's highly anticipating this year. It's a big movie. It's a big se sequence. Uh, it's potentially this movie has the 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 possibility of heading this DC movie ship or sinking entirely, sinking yeah. that whole entire franchise. And I think, especially with Zack Snyder's record as not being perfect on every movie and not yeah. being a great mm. director all the time. That you need to hold on to those magnum bullets of, oh my god, Doomsday's gonna be in the freaking movie. Yeah. Oh my god, did you see how Wonder Woman makes her entrance? I thought that was su such a good scene. And to see it wasted in a two minute trailer mm -hmm. while not leaving that surprise to it, the audience. Yeah. It's no, really upsetting. It's upset. I think we can all, I think we can <laughs> all get behind the banner. Like, I will still, every one of us will still go see that Definitely. movie. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But it's upset. I'm just like, I, but we already saw the movie. No, yeah, basically. That's how I, I actually. Know, then Batman and Superman are gonna fight for a little bit. Then Doomsday's gonna come out, and then Wonder Woman. Doomsday is Zod. Zod and, and then Aquaman is up and announced. See, for like, example, yeah, exactly. Fish Especially and, yeah. Wonder Woman. <laughs> Wonder Woman is a movie that has been in talks, announced since 2009. That's when they Statistics. first. Statistics. Yeah, I looked it up because that's when they they wanted Megan Fox for the role. Hey, can, and we, I was, oh, can we get that in a, <laughs> in a statistic? Statistics. So you have Wonder Woman for like it's all gonna be like pretty much ten years by the time like this shit gets done, oh my God. and it's just ah, uh, it's just you're you're too much hype. Uh, like we, me and I spoke briefly about when the Star Wars hype started, and as soon as they announced that they were gonna come out with a Star Wars movie, that's all you had to utter, and people are already hyping it, and that's how I I feel. Some type of way about Batman versus Superman and not in the good. Go ahead, do it. Make you feel some type of way. I still hate that and, song so much. And potentially <laughs> unpopular opinion puff in here, but I am not looking forward to that movie. It's just too much hype, too much. Uh, it's been. I feel like it's been talked about so much. The Wonder the, Woman movie. And all the, what they're releasing, the Batman vs. Superman, oh, okay. and that encompassed in it, they've released pictures, they've released, like, 
Be- uh, ben Affleck's Behind first shit footage. in his Batman costume. You know, like they did so. They've released so much that at this point, I don't even care anymore. No. And I think that's a problem with ads certain like you know when there's too much once you once once you see like subway commercials connected to it yes. then i'm just like brah you know i think but that, that there's another reason there's a reason there's a reasons behind the reason why they did that and obviously dc as far as movies has had not like had the greatest track record dark knight is their only cash cow at this point so they're really trying to you know, egg us on, and in that they really screwed up, and they gave us too much. Too, way too much. I don't so, give up I mean, anymore. On the other, on the other side of the coin for DC, I think the Suicide Squad trailers are actually pretty good. Mm. I, I, don't I, think actually, they're revealing, I, I don't think they're revealing too much. The second trailer, mm, first trailer was just revealing the Joker. That one, I. That one, I thought that was okay, just for revealing the joke. Yeah, I saw the second trailer recently. And the second trailer with Bohemian Rhapsody, I think they're trying to paint the movie as funny, Mm -hmm. but I don't think it's going to be that funny at all. I I don't think they tried to paint it as funny as more like chaotic very like that's our whole thing it's yeah like, they're, oh they're we don't very, give a look chaos like, 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 like we're gonna almost like taunting with the with the song that's kind of how i got yeah. it was like, i mean the, the suicide squad yeah, they're gonna die at any moment yeah, so like, that's kind of what i got and i feel like that was foolhardy i feel like <laughs> warner brothers probably blew a million dollars to get the 30 what? seconds the millions bohemian, the millions and millions um why not for for <laughs> bohemian <laughs> rhapsody because some people are making the argument, first of all, which is an invalid argument, that Bohemian, that doing the Bohemian Rhapsody in the trailer was much like how they did uh, Hooked on a Feeling with Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, no. I would say this, first of all. As much as I love Hooked on a Feeling, I fucking love Hooked on a Feeling. He is on that nowhere feeling. near the talent and the grace of Bohemian Rhapsody. Totally two different levels of songs. Yeah. But I think that's, that's an invalid argument because Guardians of the Galaxy incorporated the whole era of music yeah, into it was very their gen- movie, whereas I don't see Suicide Squad incorporating. That's yeah. the problem with, with them incorporating. I think the only reason they put Bohemian Rhapsody in that trailer is because it's that good it's of a fucking a song. It's fucking amazing. It's one of the top five best songs I would yeah. probably argue. You know, you know what Suicide the Squad did? They pitbulled us. They took a song that everyone already likes and just threw their own little spin on it. On top of it. I mean, it looks, it goes great with the trailer. I don't think it would go good with the movie, but for the trailer's sake, it looked good. I liked it. it but again, let me, uh, let me do this now. If you took Bohemian Rhapsody out of the Suicide Squad second trailer, is it a good trailer? Uh, let me watch it again on mute. I don't know. I'm sure they have a version of that. Yes. Uh, well, the li- the lines of pro it. and uh, con. <laughs> it's, called, it's, called, it's called just mute it, fucker. <laughs> the, I feel like the lines here are kind of like getting muddled. Like, wait, which side? Which side are we on? Well, no, <laughs> okay. There's. Pro- I think ultimately it comes down to what type of person you are. Me personally, when uh, I'm very passionate about X Men, so when Days of Future Past was, you know, starting to pop up in as trailers in movie theaters, I shit you not, I walked out of the movie theater, waited about. 40 to 50 seconds and then walked back into and sat in my seat to continue the rest of the trailers because I don't care about the other movies that they were showing but I deeply care about X-Men because I'm the type of person that I like to have zero expectations in case they put to the funny part in case they put the most actiony part in case they put the badass parts I want to go in blind because then I won't have like a preconceived notion that's personally how I like to watch movies now, there's other people, like my brother, that look up trailers on YouTube and can spend three hours just watching all these new trailers coming out for new yeah. movies. It just depends, you know, what type of person you are. I'm that type of person. Yeah. I knew the plot of Star Wars. I already know the plot of Civil War and everything. Don't fuck Yeah, yourself. like, I don't like, like that. I think, I think at the end of the day, though, like, we can all understand, we all understand whether or not, like, we watch one when too much is given. Yeah. I think we yeah. can all we all know when that and just like I don't want to I don't want to see that. I think I think studi- movie studios need to take example on I use Maze Runner as an example my second and stronger example I think and I hope you can back me up is the way Deadpool is advertising their movie. Yes. Oh my oh. gosh. Dear future I superhero like, movies or future blockbuster want, movies get on that level. I want to make a point. It it seems that all the X-Men films, Wolverine films, Deadpool, um, all those, 
They have really great, great uh, traders. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because it's Fox and they know how to do the yeah. traders. Yeah. You know, because uh, Days of Future Past, it had a really great trader. Mm -hmm. it didn't incorporate everything from the movie. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, well, I mean, they showed a few characters and things yeah, like, like that. And I wouldn't want to say it, but like sort of like Star Wars, yeah. like a lot of people went into the movie thinking it was going to be amazing, yeah. like the trainers yeah. were. And then we, got got we were generally surprised. I, I walked into uh, X-Men Days of Future Past. I, I, it was a lot better than I thought it would be. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to be that good. It was really good. I feel, Love me some X -Men. I feel like the, we are starting to come to a separation of what type of person you are as far as for his trailers. Yeah. Because I agree. Even though I, if we can give it Academy Awards for best advertising campaigns... If Deadpool doesn't Deadpool. win that award, yeah. it is the it's probably the best advertising campaign uh, you I've ever seen. Diana <laughs> was <laughs> awesome enough to grace us with a link. Yeah, uh, through oh, a yeah, chat. I, I want to put and it it's, a, it's an image. I'm sure we could put it somewhere. Uh, we'll, we'll link it on but, our page. Uh, but yeah. it it's, shows the different the different posters. Yeah, and images. It's several different posters that promote Deadpool depending on what type of genre you prefer. They had the ro the chick flick poster they had if you're more of an action guy they had deadpool shooting a ton of shit up if you're more into a drama they they still it's still parts they of the movie they have a star wars esque poster yes they have a star wars esque poster or it was like grandma's with the, with the chimichanga like, like everyone has the lightsabers and he has the chimichanga yes it's amazing you know what i mean so i think that's smart and i think actually i, I will say star wars did market well um, because I'm not huge on Star Wars. I know, crucify me. Um, but watching... Burn her but, at the stakes! <laughs> grab but it, watching it, Force it. Awakens, I'm not even that interested in Star Wars, yet that trailer and the multiple trailers that they released, I was like, wow, that looks really interesting. I want to watch that. Yeah. And I'm not even their target demographic, so I think they did a good job in, in encompassing all different... Like, opening up the demographic, if you will. Yes. And that's what I think, I don't know. My beef is that they give too much away of the good parts or the funny parts, slash sometimes they oversaturate my TV. I'm just trying to catch up on Grey's Anatomy. I don't need to watch the same trailer for Civil War ten times. Can yeah. YouTube do a thing that if I click that on a thing. video link, that if I just want to watch a video and you've already showed me the trailer I saw in the previous video... <laughs> I don't need to see the trailer again yeah. for Interstellar or for any other movie. That no, you're no, no, no. The trailer that gets me every 10 seconds on YouTube, Boom Beach. Boom Beach. <laughs> or, Boom Beach. Not, Boom knocking, Beach. not knocking hours. I understand why you guys have to have yeah. Yeah. But, but money. Yeah, but money. But. So uh, what do you feel is more important to you guys? Knowing the plot of the movie, going into the movie to have a better movie experience? Nope. Or having surprises, having... A, like an actual um, moment in a movie. Like, what is more important to you guys? I, I think the surprises are, are the best in a movie, you know? Yeah, would like, you watch not, Sixth Sense if you already knew the ending? If they no, showed the no, ending no, in the no, trailer? You know? I mean, maybe if you're curious to see, like, all the ghosts and stuff. But, like, if you already knew the twist in the movie, like, nobody would. Yeah. really go to the movie. Yeah, I, when, for me, honestly, I like, I like my trailers, like, looking through a keyhole. Just want to get the little again. That's just a description. Just like just the glimpse, you know, like the little kid, like oh, what's in the other room, and then the You're movie, bam. What? I thought we wouldn't talk about that anymore. <laughs> Anyways, no keyhole, <laughs> keyhole trailers. I like, I like me some keyhole trailers. Hey, I can respect that. Like that I sounds said, sounds like a like a sexual move. Hey, I want to do a keyhole trailer tonight, babe. <laughs> I'm gonna keyhole you so bad. Ah, oh There's no alcohol in the house. Babe, babe, stop trying to look through my keyhole. We need a trampoline for the keyhole trailer, babe. I have, I have the key, key for your hole. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, I just, for me, um, just be mindful. Too much of a good thing can be bad. You mm. know, like when Jurassic World came out, it wasn't just the Jurassic World trailers, it was Jurassic World, then the Dairy Queen commercials referencing Jurassic World and the Subway commercials and like all these commercials like yeah. Campbell's talking about Arturito soup. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that, oh my gosh. And I will oh Which actually is a kind of a cute commercial. Let but me tell you something about Jurassic World that why it was a good movie. I thought really that they showed everything they had to show in the Jurassic World trailer and that movie actually held some of the better scenes 
within the movie, did not show him off in the trailer. For much, sure, no, absolutely. That was one good thing they did. Um, but again, I, I really believe it should be just like a cut and slash, cut and slash, cut and slash. You don't want to know the surprises. Yeah. I don't want to know that Luke Skywalker is the son of Darth Vader. I don't. I'm sorry. What? I didn't get to that. What? Dude, spoiler alert! Ah! <gasps> ah! I don't want to know, like. I. Well, in, but in the, in, the, in defense of Star Wars, I'm pretty sure they didn't show that in their trailer. No, I know. I'm just making oh, an okay. argument of what trailers are feel. What I feel trailers are doing now. Too much. Going back to Age of Ultron, I felt like Age of Ultron. I felt like the producers of that movie were holding on to, oh, we're just not going to show the vision. The vision's going to be the big surprise. The vision's going to be the big surprise. So let's not show that. Yeah. But I clearly, the best parts of Age of Ultron, clearly, yeah. mm-hmm. are the Hulkbuster yeah. Hulk fight, that beginning sequence, and near the end, the whole entire spinning room where the Ultron yeah. Yeah. droids are flying around. That was, I feel. It's the second trailer? That's the second trailer, isn't that, it? You, you see yeah, that in see all it. three trailers. Yeah. In all the trailers. And it just it, it underwhelmed me. I, that's why it saddened me, the Avengers movie, because I felt like they felt... Whole, spoiler alert, by the way. Holding on to Vision was the big thing, while they had so many other action sequences and other things that people who don't care about comics don't care about Vision. People who are limited nerds don't care about vision. What they care about is those fight sequences, those action sequences. Where are you, where are you spending $150 million in CGI? And then, okay, for Or even example, like the animosity between the characters yes, to all build those up things. for future One of the movies. things I liked about the first Avengers, even though people talk about, oh, they showed the whole catching um, Iron Loki. Man out of the sky oh. and stuff like that. There were so many scenes that you never saw in any of the trailers in Avengers. Yeah. Uh, the, all the combo fight scenes between all the guys. All, all those great, beautifully CGI rendered scenes. And that's why I felt like Avengers was a, a beautiful movie. A great movie. It was a great experience. You had like these, oh my god moments as a nerd. Uh, how, so, how know, was that? You, that... Know, you know what? I have to say about the difference between Avengers 1 and Avengers 2 for the final fight scene is uh, mainly that the final fight in Avengers 1, they were in a big ass city. So the camera would have to pan around a lot. And so you saw like a big- Very view. dynamic. Yeah, very dynamic view. And then in Avengers 2, they're all in that one yeah. room guarding that thing. What, what but that's a great thing. shot. I'm not knocking that yeah. shot. It's not, not a knocking shot, is, but like- In the I trailer, I already yeah. saw that okay, in yeah. the trailer. That's what, that's what Furying me a little more. Yeah. For me, uh, Age of Ultron actually was one of those that the oversaturation in ads uh, turned me off. I didn't watch it until what, a month ago. Yeah. That we was were, the first time I saw Age of Ultron. We were, we because, were babysitting because, and he was like, let me just put it in. Yeah. And the other thing about <laughs> oh, yeah. trailers is if you have a movie that you think is going to be a great trailer, you see the movie, the trailer for the movie, it's like, oh my God, it's a great trailer. Oh my God, it's a great trailer. And you go on a movie and I'm like, why am I watching Man of Steel right now? And that's... <laughs> hey, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, and, that's how, and that's how I felt about Spider-Man 2. That, or, well, not Spider-Man 2. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, I loved, 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 loved the first one, I think. In my opinion, Andrew Garfield is the perfect Spider-Man. <gasps> Sorry, Toby. Get out my face. Mm-hmm. Um, but but there's a huge difference between how they marketed the first one to the second one and that's what I hate when movie studio execs they're like well we got a big success on the first one let's fuck it all up the second time around in their defense no, they the showed... second movie in my opinion I think was a bit better I, I enjoyed the second one what? much more no. than that dubstep shit Yes. I, I'm no. sorry. I mean, that I, was so horrible. Was okay, awesome. and Electro was a god halfway through that movie where... and gets taken down by Spider Man with a battery pack? What? And then the fact that they trailer, in the trailer they made Paul Giamatti's character seem like he was actually a big Paul part Giamatti, of the movie. He has, like two, he has more, he has less lines than Boba Fett does in the entire trilogy. <laughs> Then in uh, one yes, movie. I remember they put they put the... him there. They showed too much. I was like scribbling all this down. Re- I was getting angry rewatching the trailer last night. It was just I like, think oh. personally for me it was because Andrew Garfield at that point was a better actor in the second movie. Watch what you say. 
I think if, yes. you're, if you wanted to see a great love story, I, yeah, yeah, Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2 is where I'm going to go. And then you have to just, and then just cut out all it the villains. Me. You know what? Spider-Man is about that. He, he falls in love with like three different girls. Uh, one is Gwen Stacy. This The first two movies, so far Gwen Stacy. We haven't even seen Mary Jane, whatever. Anyways, that movie was good. It had it all. What I didn't like about it was that the Hobgoblin, no, the Green Goblin part felt tacked on. Did yeah, you know? yeah, no. Side, I, side, uh, side note, did you know that Mary Jane was supposed to be the girl from Insurgent? Yeah, apparently yeah, she wasn't hot that. enough. Insurgent. That's um, the, Shaving Woody. The Jennifer Lawrence wannabe? Yes. No, that yeah, one. Yeah, that what? one. She's cool. Ah! Fall in Our Stars. That's another movie. That one. Doing. She's way not. I'm sorry. She's not hot enough. She really she's isn't. She's hotter than freaking. Why are we talking about hot enough? We're talking about trainers. Yeah. You're setting the bar really okay. low. Okay. okay. Really sorry. quick. Really, just to just to clear my mind. Let's get back. Let's happy. get back. Okay. What's a better movie, Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man One or Spider Man Two? Well, Spider Man Two. I'm not saying Amazing Spider Man Two. Spider-Man 2 is definitely the superior movie out of all the Spider-Man. Okay. High five! Really? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. I, Dr. Octopus. The only reason why I have to argue with that because, is because... because... No, time out. That doesn't count because you both are huge fans and you're a fan of two of the guy that plays Willem Dafoe. Willem, Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. It's freaking Willem Dafoe. But that's Willem not even a no, fair no, argument okay. because okay. if you, if you put... Willem Dafoe in the movie. Go ahead. If, Actually, I was going to say, if you're going to be like, oh, Willem Dafoe... Bro, if Christopher Walken was in any Spider-Man played by, like, Kirsten Dunst Bro, playing Spider-Man, you would love Fox it. Fox and all these freaking amazing actors and amazing Spider-Man. You had Paul Giamatti! And you, you, and you put a horrible Russian... Yeah, Why? Yeah, but think about Why? the first Amazing Spider-Man, which was it was not. I thought I I I appreciated. Yeah, he did. He You're did. a weird. He has a. Where's his snout? Where's the teeth? Snout? Where's the teeth? It the hadn't gotten there yet. yet. He looked like reptile on roids, man. What? Have he you was seen, reptile have you seen the roids? little lizards that are like in your garden? They don't have teeth. They, yes, they do. They have snouts. Yeah, uh, they have snouts, but they don't have like teeth. Well, teeth. I'm sure they You're do. But like a, when like they got enlarged. Look, the laser from the comics has oh teeth. Oh my god, we're gonna get really deep into the comics. Whatever. Right the the point is, my favorite is... lizard's my favorite lizard, and he is like a savage, borderline crocodile. Oh, creature. the uh, tormented. Yeah. Ah, uh, good, it's good stuff. Yeah. Like ridiculous, like scary. There was nothing scary. I understand it's for children. And another thing, I think we gotta take any aspects of these trailers and of these movies that they are also being marketed to children. So I have to, if I'm gonna make a cop out for the pro side. It would be that these are made also for children. But if I can counteract my own point, Inside Out didn't give a lot of that movie mm -hmm. at all in the trailer. I was hooked with Inside Out trailer. I saw Inside Out. I was shocked and amazed, and I love that movie. Still I haven't like seen it. that hey, movie. I have another point for you. Go. Deadpool. Deadpool okay. is not made for kids at all. And apparently, Deadpool has taken to Twitter... To, like curse out her mom. Yeah, because she's there's a petition going on. Which is foolish. She has a petition saying, "Hey, Fox Studios, can you make Deadpool PG-13 for my eight-year-old son to go watch it?" First of all, your son is still isn't 13, even if they change it to PG-13. Second of all, fuck you. <laughs> they already filmed the movie. <laughs> no, the but you can still change. The, I don't know change the, the movies the I'm they pretty could sure they're like, they'll just cut on some the blue well, they I'm pretty sure on like the blu-ray the blu special they, they'll yeah. give you like a PG-13 yeah. but no like I'm sorry version. like if we're gonna get it's gonna get real, real we don't have time to get all real up in here but how about parents instead of bitching about the fact that your little children can't play you know Grand Theft Auto and can't watch Deadpool how about you like grow some balls and tell your kid no so that way they don't turn out to be a huge douchebag maybe Wow. That would Those be nice. Are just the opinions of Diana, not our own uh, <laughs> panel. That's just, That's just you know, be a parent. <laughs> PSA. Be a parent. So, I mean, some of the best parts of my childhood were sneaking out away from my parents to do the bad stuff. Not that we're and you don't, and you don't want to end up. The most we ever snuck kidding. out was watch a double feature of Good Burger and George of the Jungle. Yes! That was the best night. Do you remember that night? It was a Palace of Teen. We were so happy. We were like, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, who wouldn't sneak out to see those gems? Just speaking of a pagoda. In, in other in news, Burger, so fighting right. broke out on the Gaza Strip today. And uh, do you want to get back to the... <laughs> so back to the trailers. Back um, to the trailers. I'd rather uh, me. 
the type of person I wouldn't judge. I mean, I'm dating someone who loves trailers. Uh, he respects the fact that I hate them, so he can watch them on his laptop to his heart's content, and I will have them on mute and be like, don't you dare tell me what you saw. And it's kind of hard because sometimes he'll watch a trailer and then it's like, ah! Yes! Oh, oh yes. my gosh! And it's just like, <laughs> gee, I wonder if that trailer was We should have today. reaction videos of just us watching trailers. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my, oh my god! <laughs> what? Oh my god, what is Winter Soldier and Captain America doing to Tony Stark? I know! What? Ah! Mm, where are you gonna put that hand? Where are you gonna put it? The frustra- I think I got really angry. We were watching Dirty Grandpa when we saw that trailer, and I'm like, what is this poppycock? Oh, yeah. Oh, you haven't seen the Civil War trailer yet? She saw it? I'm anti trailers! I don't no. go. But she saw it. She saw it. I will tell you, I really hope that they have a lot more Civil War. Civil I'm War is going to be a man! I'm really praying for that. But, okay, I feel, as a uh, intelligent consumer, guys, if you do want to keep the surprises, I feel like you should just watch one trailer, per, primarily the first or the teaser trailer, mm -hmm. and pretty much put yourself on an abstinence of all the other trailers. Yep. And pretty much just lock yourself out and tune yourself out. At one point, I was doing this for Avengers Age of Ultron, because I felt like I saw way too much, and I'm afraid they're going to keep showing us stuff. So anytime I came on TV, I was like, I like to walk out of the room, or I will change channel, or something like that. I actually had I to start that. doing this for Deadpool the other day, because I'm afraid, even though I think they're being very smart at their marketing, I'm being very scared yeah. that they might show me something. Actually, my brother spoiled something for Deadpool for me, but I'm, that's on a later point. So <laughs> Stop spoiling stuff. I mean, don't talk about it! Stop! You stop it. You spoil it. What I do is, I mean, I'm usually on my computer when I'm, and I have the TV on, so I'm like half paying attention to either. I'll, as soon as I hear, like, you know, the Hunger Games whistle, yeah. I mute. Mute. That's it. And that's cool. And then I mute and I keep doing whatever I'm doing. Was right? it, what was that guy, Lafont Don LaFontaine? Yeah, the, the, no, they no, are in a world. Completely no, submerged in a world. <laughs> but yeah, just just mute. If you're with the type of person that you'd rather go with zero expectations, just mute. It's not you, just wanna, it. you just, just want to wing it. Really just quick, it. just so we can end it on positive. What was the greatest trailer you have ever watched in your life? Mm. If you can remember one. Jeez, oh, wow, a great. I actually wrote down the worst ones. <laughs> what are the worst ones? What are the worst ones you've ever seen? For me. I can't believe I still remember it because it was so long ago. Writing in Car with Boys came out in 2001. It's a really crabby little, you know, drama with Drew, Drew Barrymore, Barrymore yeah. Brittany Murphy, Steve Zahn. But they pulled the funny people where they showed nothing but funny parts of the trailer. And then you go see it and you want to slit your wrist and you're like, this is really, really depressing. That's exactly what that movie, it was very depressing. And that was the worst so one. So they just turned this into like a most memorable trailer for you. Yes. Go ahead, guys. Uh, memorable trailer for me. Man, honestly, I think the reason why it's so memorable wasn't so much for the trailer. It was Ghost Rider 2. But because I thought, you know what? This is going to be awesome. This is the way it looked. It looked gritty. It looked awesome. <laughs> Misleading. And I kid you not, the best part of that movie was the end. Because Ghost <laughs> Rider is yeah. covered in blue fire. And that is it. That's it. That's it. It. I'd rather not talk about is that, that anymore. Is no, that um, it? Is that it? I think one more. Hey, that's it. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna stick with the worst trailer I've ever seen. Um, I the name of it. Oh, go. Movie. Is that the name of the trailer? No. So okay. go. I was right. going to say probably the most positive experience I ever had with a trailer. Oh my, I totally had a brain fart right now. Keep it like, keep it Oh, just me, <laughs> like me. I will tell you, okay, on the argument of a trailer that, that, uh, does not match the movie. Me, that does not match the movie, Ugh. that totally, like, jipped me in the movie, was Bug, which was a movie with, uh, oh, oh my Ashley God. Judd, is it Ashley Judd? Uh -huh. I think Ashley Judd, Michael I Shannon, and is directed by the director of The Exorcist, and it was marketed as like this, oh, it's going to be like something like The Exorcist, Oh my god! That movie is so depressingly annoying and horrible that Ashley Judd's naked in that movie, fully, fully naked. Mm. Um, and, 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 did not care. and I did not care. I, it was so like 
Hey, but you know, rewatching the scene of him pulling out his tooth and looking at it under the microscope. <laughs> 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 that is so funny. <laughs> it was, I the movie about paranormal. Watch that movie. movie. It's about paranoia. I remember. It's I about, remember yeah. the trailer. It's about paranoia. Basically, he thinks that the government's like putting bugs all over. Well, not like bugs, like, like, like mice. No, right? yeah, but now yeah. I remember my most memorable positive trailer. Okay, let's. I will tell you, and it's a movie that I thoroughly enjoy. I'm sad that the sequel wasn't that great because the, this first movie was not only an artistic, beautiful piece of artwork. As mm-hmm. a movie, it was one of the better comic book movies. Actually, one of the most underrated comic book movies I think out there. Oh, so and Amazing Spider Man with Andrew Garfield. I don't know. I'm about to black dolly you so bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to turn this into a snuff film. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, is actually Sin City. Sin City. Oh. Wow. The, the trailer music for Sin City, uh, the trailer itself. Again, short, fast, yeah. to the point. Mm-hmm. You you got to see your stars. You got to see them doing action. I believe that trailer alone, not even the movie, brought back Mickey Rourke from the dead. Of his yeah, oh, yeah. That movie. I mean, that, and that movie. I love that movie. That movie is thoroughly one of my favorite movies. It's yeah, gritty. It's, like it's hardcore. Story. It's the one of the most adult uh, comic book movies you're gonna see out there, and it's a beautifully artistically rendered movie. And you get a free Quentin Tarantino design scene in that movie. For free. Yeah. For free. Uh, actually, thinking about why... Uh, it's a scene where Miho goes ape on everything. Ah, uh, well, there we go. Uh, one of my favorite trailers um, would have to be Limitless with uh, Bradley Cooper. Uh, do you ever see it? it I, he takes I, a pill. I know. It's like a miracle it, pill. The, the trailer was really that impressive to you? Yeah. I, you know what? I liked because it was just like... The only thing I remember being about that trailer is like, why is Dan, why is Robert De Niro running in this movie? That was the only <laughs> thing I remember from He's going to hurt himself. Like, Stop God, it. He's so old. Don't do that. Like, I don't think you remember him running in that movie at he's all. He's running in that movie. He's running into a building in that movie. That's the only thing I remember because that's the only thing I remember that well, trailer besides a clear pill. That's I, it. I liked it just because, again, it, it was like... Limitless is not one of those huge movies you're going to watch, but it's a good movie. And I tried to tell them, just like, that looks interesting. I want to watch that. And I was pleasantly surprised. It didn't. It was very good. I thought it was very well done. You should watch the movie. What about you, Alex? And I remember yes. my very worst trailer ever. Fantastic Four. The reboot. Uh, it was, it's on my notes. Uh, that is worst. It's on the list. It's on the list. <laughs> Statistics! Um, the reason why... He's got that because... shit. That shit is on his list. Oh, he got that? I'm sorry. It's a, it's a hollow song. I'm sorry. Thank you. The shit, though? Well, it's a kiss. Pretty sure it's the kiss. It's I, the used, kiss I, used to like, th- I used to like that song. Thanks, bro. No, you just ruined it for him. Yes. Anyways. Um, the Fantastic Four reboot. Ugh. It, the movie itself is not as bad as I don't know. Okay, no, so no, I'm no. just gonna say hey, hey, it's hey, not as bad right. as everyone says. I went and saw it with an open mind, and I did not like it. <laughs> okay, but the trailer made it seem so fucking good that it, that it, it just ruined it for me. Can like, I tell you another like trailer? The whole thing, well, the whole thing was um, that scene where. Where Mr. Fantastic is saying, Oh, what, 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 when will he be there? And he's like, Oh, two minutes. And you see the thing just drop out of the plane. That whole scene was not even in the movie. Oh. <laughs> not in so the movie. So the best part of that trailer. The best part of the trailer, the the part of the trailer was not even in the that movie. That has happened. I remember when I watched a movie, like, Wait a minute, something's missing. They pulled the uh, 47 Ronin. For me, it, it's funny oh, because, is right. mm. because the, the Fantastic Four trailers for me, I thought it made the movie look so serious. Like, that's what I remember. That's what I got from all that. The ads is like, this is re- this is like a really serious version of yeah, Fantastic grittier. Four. It's the, o- the only superhero movie based in comic, Marvel Comics, that I have never seen. That's good. And that I don't want to see. That's good. Ever. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's not really as bad as everyone says. The, when you say something, it's not that bad. Uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of. But maybe if it didn't exist in the comic book universe, and it was like a standalone movie, and maybe if you've never heard, like, it's, it's still entertaining, you know what I mean? I got this face. So, it just doesn't thing. live up to the... So, it's, it's, since we're going to be ending talking about this garbage really quick, <laughs> another movie... Another trailer that convinced me, oh, this movie's gonna be really great. 
And not only was this movie horrible, it knocked back the potential of video game movies another oh, 10 no. years. No. Do you guys remember the Max Payne movie? Ah! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. That commercial, first of all, it was Mark Wahlberg and Kunis. I was already kind of sold on the cast. I was like, okay, yeah, Mila Kunis is after uh, Forgetting Star Marshall. I'm trying to, I'm trusting her. Okay. Mark Wahlberg. He, Mark Wahlberg. Marky Mark, Mark. Mark hasn't done anything wrong yet. He just did the part. Yeah, what yeah. can go wrong? And the trailer, boom! There are angels flying overhead. They have this cool Marilyn Manson song playing in the background. I'm, I'm into this. I feel like I'm watching a good version of The Matrix. And that movie was so bad. Ah. So That's how I feel about Jonah Hex. So Does anyone ever remember that that Don't was a thing? Don't mind me talking about these movies. Yo. Michael Fassbender's in Jonah Hex. What? Yeah. I've never seen... Okay. That's how bad Jonah Hex. The only time he did me wrong. Jonah Hex. That's another one. That's another movie I haven't seen. Part so, of it was on Telemundo the other night. And I now you guys see how we feel about trailers. Um, we've got to wrap up soon. We're going to let you guys know we're going to start doing um, basically portable podcasts. So we're going to start doing podcasts at other oh! areas soon. We're going to do some exciting giveaways yeah. at those areas. Remember to keep in touch with us on our Periscope, YouTube, iTunes. The Facebook. The Facebook. Facebook. No, the, of course, our Instagram. Well, first of all, we really, really want to thank all you cosplayers that send us all the submissions you do. Yes. We're sorry we don't get to all of them. You got to understand, we get so many submissions. There's so many great cosplayers out Which there. Which is awesome. And it's awesome. We really appreciate you guys. We really appreciate all the things you sent us. Hey, if you guys like this podcast and if you guys like watching this video, if you guys want to see more of us, you know, you can hit that little thumbs up button there on the side. Maybe write a review. Maybe write a comment of things that you want us to do. We'll probably do them. Who knows? And uh, hit subscribe. And hit subscribe as That's well if possible. Good. I feel like we're giving them homework. I'm sorry for giving you homework, guys. Just a little things. A little, little homework, keep, you know. Little buttons. Who doesn't like clicking buttons? Who doesn't like clicking buttons? I love me some buttons. Whoa, I'm in the shape of this. Yeah. So, again, Fall out. If you guys uh, oh, want to okay. see us do any unique uh, footage, you guys want to do any unique interviews, if you guys want us to talk about anything, if you guys want to send us questions and comments, by all means, you know, you can comment below on YouTube, you can comment to us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the stuff. So from me, Raul, and that's Diana. Parker. That's Parker. Alex. That's my Alex. And Penny is somewhere down here. Uh, hey, Penny. I'm your Alex. Uh, yeah. my Alex. He's <laughs> Tuna's brothers ever. <laughs> You guys make Mario and Luigi. And like, that's Penny. Hey, Peter. Hey, Penny. And so from all of us, we like thank you. Say thank you. Thank Keep you. watching and goodbye. Bye-bye.